Good afternoon, Saints. Good afternoon, everybody. Ready to get started here this morning. Thank mm -hmm. the Lord Praise God. for His goodness. It's good all the time. Been good to everybody. Yes, he is. You know he's been good to us. I hope he's been good to everybody else, or they have, you know, came to the realization that he is good. Yes. <laughs> This is faith class, and we've been on a subject here for some weeks, mm -hmm. authentic faith. Mm -hmm. Authentic faith. Uh, we picked that up from a, a text in uh, Second Timothy, the first chapter, the fifth verse. Um, but where we want to start today is with a word of prayer first. Okay. Amen. Yes, indeed. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for your goodness. We thank, thank you for you. your word. We thank you for Jesus. We Amen. thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for our health and our strength. We thank you for our prosperity. We thank you for you having mercy on us and your grace. We ask that you will lead us and guide us by your Holy Spirit here this morning. As your word says, you will bring everything to remembrance. And we also ask that you will forgive us of our sins yes. as yes. we forgive those who have sinned against us. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Our text is Romans, the third chapter, but we're going to start a different way today. We're going to get there. Romans, the first chapter, verses uh, 16 and 17. This is out of King James. It says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Amen. Amen. From faith to faith. I like the way that uh, uh, it says, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. Amen. Amen. That's what it says, right? Does it say that same thing out of the Amplified? It reads a little different. Well, well, it's pretty read? much the same. Which one do you want me to read? 16, 17. I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for the salvation from his wrath and punishment to everyone who believes in Christ as Savior, to the Jews first and also to the Greek. Mm -hmm. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed both springing from faith and leading to faith, disclosed in a way that awakens more faith, as it is written and forever written, remains written, the just and the upright shall live by faith. Amen. So in Romans, the third chapter, the third verse, <laughs> Amen. I was looking at something else. Uh, Romans, the third chapter, the third verse says, For what if some did not believe? Should their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Is that the way it reads out of Amplified? With the third verse. Mm -hmm. What then? If some did not believe or were unfaithful to God, their lack of belief will not nullify and make envy. Uh, invalid, excuse me, invalid the faithfulness of God in his word, will it? It's not no, gonna it change. will not. It's not going to change God's faith. It will not do anything. Faithful when we're not faithful. Wonder if some does not believe. We know with these broadcasts and what we do since we uh, started since ever since we started teaching and preaching that some are going to believe 
and some are not. We already know that. Right. It's not going to change God. Because even when Jesus was here on earth, he only said what he heard his father say. He only, you know, done what he saw his father do. And okay. some believed and some did not. But that didn't make God's faith of none effect. It says, uh, God forbid, let God be true and every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mayest justify in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Amen? Amen. Well, like I said, now we can go to uh, our next, our next text was in 2 Timothy. Uh, the first chapter, we picked up some verses over there because uh, you got to, well, I'm, I'm going to hold on. I'm getting ahead of myself. Second Timothy, the first chapter, he says, um, the fifth verse, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which first dwelt in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that it is in thee also. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee, by the putting on of my hands. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a strong mind. Is that the way it reads out of your... Uh, translation starting with the fifth verse. Mm -hmm. I remember your sincere and unqualified faith, the surrendering of your entire self to God in Christ, with confident trust in His power, wisdom and goodness, a faith which was which first lived in the heart of your grandmother Lois mm -hmm. and your mother Eunice, and I am confident that it is in you as well. It was in their heart. Um, that is why I remind you to fan into the flame the gracious gift of God, the inner fire, the special endowment which is in you through the laying of one hands, of my hands, which those are the elders at your ordination, so they ordained them. Uh, for God did not give us the spirit of timidity or cowardness or fear, but he has mm -hmm. given us a spirit of power and of love and sound mind and personal discipline, abilities that result in a calm, well-balanced mind and self-control. Amen. So in that fifth verse, he says, when I call to remember the unfeigned faith that is in thee. Uh, unfeigned, we don't use that word no. today. We use words like sincere, genuine, true, real, authentic. That's where we got our and, and they, title from, and they authentic they put a description faith. from it in parentheses saying, Surrendering your entire self to God in Christ with confident trust in his power and wisdom and goodness. A faith, you know, that's no, the way they think uh, That goes, they put that in, let's see here, in parentheses, uh, right after it says in Amplified, I remember your sincere and unqualified faith. Mm -hmm. The surrendering of your entire self to God in Christ with confident trust in his power, wisdom, and goodness, a faith which was first in the heart of your grandmother Lois. Right, and it was a trust in, in God in Christ. You know, mm -hmm. that's, that's, they didn't have the confidence in their self. It was, it's in, it's in Christ. That's the way we're supposed to be. Now, we have looked at this. We have been building on what authentic faith really is. Right. Now, if there is unfeigned faith, that means that there is feigned faith. The word feigned means to pretend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Perpetrating a fraud, not real. Feigned faith is fake faith, mm -hmm. counterfeit. 
That means that you're pretending like you have faith or, you know, you're imitating somebody who you think has faith or seems like they have faith and you're doing what they're doing. That's um, pretending right. like you have faith yourself, <laughs> faith in God. And then we looked at arrogant faith, which is overconfidence in yourself, a presumptuous faith. You know, uh, we looked at that, how the, the Israelites were overconfident and they pursued that God was with them when he really wasn't. Yeah. And Moses had just told them that, you know, God told you to go back into the wilderness. And they said, no, we have sinned. <laughs> and now we're ready to go and, and fight against these people in, in, in Canaan. And, you know, that is just arrogant faith, overconfidence faith. And when God has really told you something else and you're saying, no, I've sinned, Lord. You know, it's, it, you know when you do sin, it, you should confess your sins. But if God has told you to do something else, you need to do that first. And then wait on the Lord for him to tell you what to do next. Right, because they were just being straight out and out disobedient. Right. And then we also looked at unsupported faith. That's faith when you take a quote out of the scriptures. You know, like um, one quote that so many people take is in, uh, I think it's in, uh, we looked at it, was it in Mark or Matthew? Uh, about um, I think it was in Mark. You're talking about when they be saying the Lord is going to uh, bless them. Well, bless that's them. when you say um, all things are possible right. to him that believes. Right. You take that quote and you misquote it. Right. They really, really misquote it. They, you know. Um, That was when, uh, you know, when uh, they tried to heal this uh, man's son right. who had a, a spirit mm -hmm. and, they could. and they couldn't cast it out, an mm -hmm. unclean spirit or however you want to put it, a demonic spirit, and they couldn't cast him out. And then uh, Jesus said, oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long should I be with you? Bring him unto me. And Jesus asked the man, you know about it? And he said, yes, Lord, I believe, mm -hmm. but help thou my unbelief. unbelief. And then Jesus told him, well, all things are possible to those that believe. believe. And a lot of people take that out of context. And they'll say, well, all things are possible to them that believe, but you don't have the foundation. Are you basing it on healing? Or are you basing it on your own gain? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm, I'm going I'm to go out here and by faith get this money mm -hmm. or get this building. And then you find out that it don't happen. Right. That's unsupported faith. And another type of faith we looked at was dead faith. And that's when you're saying that you're, you know, these people need help. And, you know, and, and instead of you giving them help, you uh, tell them, bless, be blessed, mm -hmm. and go in peace, right. rather than doing something for them. That's, that's dead faith. Right. You're saying something, but you're not doing nothing. Not doing anything to help them. Right. You're not doing anything to help anybody. And we also looked at faith that you can see. Right. That's right. And also faith you can hear. You can hear faith in somebody's voice. Right. Whether they have faith in something or not. In something. And um, you know, a lot of people say, well, I got faith, I have faith, I have faith. But faith in what? Right. Do you see anything? Do you hear anything? Right. And we uh, last week looked at fellowship. It's, it's hard to have faith in God without having fellowship with Him. That's right. Or in Him. 
worshiping him. Amen. Amen. It's hard to have fellowship with God without worshiping him. And, uh, you know, having fellowship with God, you know, you're talking. What you're doing before you do anything, you're asking God about it. Jesus said, um, you know, when you ask, you should ask in his name. In his name. So that the Father can be glorified. Amen. But if you don't have no kind of communion with God, if you're just, you know, asking God for everything that you want, and you're not listening to what he's saying back to you, you he know, if you, if you can't, you know, if your prayer ends with not listening to what he's saying back to you, right. that's not communion with God. That, that's not fellowship with God. It isn't. You're not listening. You know, you're not obeying God. And um, what I used to have a problem with is uh, the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. You know, some kind of way, you, you know, no matter how long you be in the Word, you can deviate from the truth until you have fellowship with God and he can tell you what you've been doing wrong. Amen. 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 That's fellowship. All of God's word is true. Every last bit of it. Every last bit of his word is true. And, and uh, the only thing that has changed about our new covenant is that Jesus has fulfilled the law. Hey, thank you. He God, came and fulfilled God, the law yes. for us. Mm -hmm. He redeemed us from the curse of the law. Yeah. And he, he became a sacrifice, a substitute for our sins. Yeah, because we couldn't do it. Because before they were, you know, we substituting, you know, mm -hmm. um, animals, animals and all that stuff. And they had the Leviticus priesthood and all that stuff. And that they, they used to do this. But... That is that, the right. only thing that has actually changed about God's word. Amen. He still wants you to do things that he told them to do in the Old Testament. Right. Because he couldn't even depend on the priest to do what they were supposed well, to do. Well, Brother Carter, you talking about you talking a lot and, of and stuff. And a whole lot of stuff they shouldn't have been Now, doing. here's the scripture that I'm standing on. It's Romans 7, 12. Because a lot of people, you know, they say, oh, you're talking about the law. Well, you know, and they well, say it in a despised uh, way. Uh, the reason I know this is because I used to do that. But the Lord had to correct me. Right, we got under the law. And uh, here in Romans 7, 12, it says, Wherefore, the law is holy, mm -hmm. the commandments holy, and just, and good. Is that the way it reads out of yours? It says, so then the law is holy and the commandments, the commandment is holy and righteous and good. There wasn't nothing wrong with the law. It was something wrong with us. Mm -hmm. We couldn't, we couldn't keep it. Um, hello? Um, we just couldn't keep the law. No, we couldn't. There wasn't nothing wrong with the law. The law was, it says, <laughs> you know, uh, the law is holy and, and the commandments it. holy mm -hmm. and just and good. We couldn't keep the law, mm -hmm. but Jesus kept the law for us. Mm -hmm. He fulfilled the law. For right, because it says it in the next verse. You yeah. know, so we have to really watch. Uh, me, myself, I, that's what the Lord told me to, to watch because my wife teaches every other Sunday and she teaches on Thursday and she uh, goes into the law and the prophets a lot and the Psalms and and I had a problem with that and I talked to the Lord about it and the Lord told me you know you know you need to get on board just put it lightly you know the Lord will correct you yes he does you know what I'm saying he will correct you so what we want to look at Today is um, we don't want to say I'm going to try that faith. Mm -hmm. Please don't say that. 
<laughs> Don't you ever <laughs> say that to God. You know, mm. and a lot of people do that, and that's why they say faith don't work. And it does. But it does. All of the time. They say, well, you know, I tried that faith, and it didn't work. I tried tithing, and it didn't work. I, I tried that healing stuff, and it didn't work. I tried praying in the Spirit, and it didn't work. And they're not growing at here's, all. They're just not growing. Here's what we just read not you, you out, of, God you out of 2 Timothy, the first chapter. You must do it. That fifth verse, it says... Um, I remember your sincere and unqualified faith, the surrendering, surrendering of your entire self to God and Christ with confident trust in his power, wisdom, yeah. and goodness, a faith. Right. You have to be fully persuaded about faith. You really do. Anything about God, you have to be you have to be fully persuaded that it is true. It is true, and and that's why he he was saying in Romans, uh, the third chapter. He said, uh, <laughs> "You know the Lord is so good," and also I'm apologizing to my wife for you know giving her a hard time with the Old Testament. Uh, he said, "For what if some did not believe? Should their unbelief make the faith of God without effect?" So we don't want to try faith. We want faith that finishes our whole course. Amen. Right? Right, because it says in, in the heart, and you know that's part of my message, once it's in your heart, you can see. You can see the power. You receive the power, and you do have all the power of God in there. And you best to believe it. It's his. But if you have faith in it, everything you have faith Amen. in. Amen. It's going to come about. Amen. Now, I was looking at a scripture this morning, Psalms 105. You don't have to check it either. <laughs> which is a very powerful psalm, which gives a, a brief history of the Israelites. All right, Psalms 105. Psalms 105. And a verse caught my eye. It says, verse 19, it reads out of King James, until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. See, a lot of people say, well, I'm going to try faith. But what is happening, faith is trying you. Amen. I'm going to try prosperity. No, prosperity is trying you. Right. <laughs> I'm going to try that healing, but no, healing is trying you and it to see if you are authentic. See if you have authentic faith, mm -hmm. real faith, sincere faith, genuine faith, unfeigned faith, mm -hmm. to see if you are pretending. Amen. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> see if you're real. And then what it was talking about here in this 19th verse, it was talking about, uh, well, actually the 17th verse says, uh, uh, here's what it reads, it says, and, and he sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a slave, mm -hmm. whose feet they hurt with feathers and was laid in iron. Mm -hmm. Until the time of the word came, the word of the Lord tried him. That's what happens, children, when you walk, live by faith. You live from faith to faith. And what faith is doing, his word is trying you. And this is refined and, and, and tested. Amen. And so, made him into what God wanted him to Let's do. look at some scriptures here in 2 Timothy to give you all a foundation the on Lord this. The Lord is good. I mean, he, he was merciful. Because with God, it's... You know, let me just give you another scripture out of the Old Testament. Since the Lord, you know, opened yeah, my eyes. Yeah, because I mean, it's um, Jeremiah, the 17th chapter. Let me just give you some more scripture here. I mean, 
And it has strengthened you. Because you. we want you to have confidence in God. That See, God cannot lie. Mm -hmm. He's not going to. And God is unchangeable. What he said in the Old Testament, <clears throat> he's saying also in the New Testament. He's saying it over and over again. Like I said, the only thing that has changed with this new covenant that we're under now, that Jesus is our high priest. And the Old Testament keeps telling you he's coming. And Jesus, <laughs> God has given all oh. things over to him. Amen. Until, you know, the end times. Now here in Jeremiah, the 17th chapter, verse 7, it says, Blesses the man that trusts in the Lord Amen. and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the rivers, by the waters, and that spreads out her roots by the river, and shall not see when the heat comes, but her leaf shall be green and shall be and shall not be careful in a time of job, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Now, read them verses out after five. It, it brings it out a lot more. Which, which verses? Verses 7 through 10. You're skipping on my mission for an hour, but that's all right. Well, uh, no, no, I, I'm with 10. you now. We're okay. one. Okay. Uh, it reads, Blessed with spiritual security is the man who believes and trusts in and relies on the Lord, and whose hope and confident expectation is the Lord, for he will be nourished like a tree planted by the waters that spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear the heat when it comes. Mm -hmm. But its leaves will be green and moist. It will not be anxious and concerned in a year of drought, nor stop burning fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things. And it is extremely sick. Mm. Who can understand it fully and know its secret motives? <laughs> I, the Lord, search and examine the mind. I test the heart to give to each man according to his ways, according to his results of his deeds. Now, in one translation, <laughs> that 10th verse yeah. says, I try the heart. Mm hmm See, the Lord is trying you. Yes, he is. He's examining you. To see if you're real. So when you ask them for something and praying for something and you say you have faith in it and he's looking in your heart and he's seeing it. Oh, no. Okay, now let's look at 2 Timothy, no faith in the you. third chapter. I'm just saying some this, words. This is all me. through the word of God. Yeah. I mean, these are, <clears throat> yes. you know, you search the scriptures for yourself and you will find out that God is true, let every man be a liar. Amen. You know, when people say, well, that faith don't work, that healing don't work, that prosperity mm -hmm. don't work. You need to check you know, yourself. You really need to examine yourself and, examine and, yourself. and look at, and, and you know, that's what we, I normally preach on the first sun, Sunday, is examine yourself to see whether you're in the faith. Amen. When you, you know, say things you like mean. that. Mm -hmm. Because what you're doing, you're speaking against God's word. Sure. And sure when you're speaking you against God's word, you're speaking against him, and you're saying what he says is not true. It's blaspheming. Might as well just say it like it is. And then you wonder why different things happen to you in your life. You're bringing it on yourself. Right. Second uh, Timothy, the third chapter, Here's what the Word of God says. Uh, the first verse, it says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Man shall be lovers of their own self, mm -hmm. covenants, boasters, proud, blasphemers, mm -hmm. 
disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinuance, fearers, despisers of those who are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. See, people have a form of godliness. You know, they have all these, you Dressing know, right, looking right. You know, they they are, you know, pretending like they have faith, and you oh. know, they are quoting things unsupported, right. and right. saying they're going to do things and do nothing. And, and, you know, as a, a child of God who is in Christ, who has confidence in God, he, he sees and hears what they're saying, and he knows that they're not walking in faith. That's right. But what he sees and hears. Read them verses out of five, verses 1 through uh, 5. It reads, but understand this. That in the last days, dangerous times of great stress and trouble <clears throat> will come difficult days that will be hard to bear. For people will be lovers of self, narcissistic, self-focused, lovers of money, impelled by greed, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, and profane. And they will be unloving, devoid of natural human affection, calloused and inhumane. Every cons they, they can't even, they're not able to reconcile. Irreconcilable, it says here. Mm -hmm. Malice, gossip, devoid of self control, intemperate, immoral, mm -hmm. brutal, and haters of good. Mm -hmm. Traitors, reckless, conceited, lovers of sensual pleasure rather than lovers of God. We see that today. Amen. Holding to a form of outward godliness, religion, although they have denied its power for their conduct and null effect, nullifies their claim of faith. Avoid such people. Keep away from them. Amen. So in the fourth chapter of this same book, Paul, he won't let up. He can't. He says in the seventh verse, here's what he said, that Paul said, I have fought a good fight. He has fought a good fight. Yeah, he has. He also said and here, verse in, that, um, in? Did you just read? that was the seventh oh, verse. Oh, I see it. I see it. He also said in the first Timothy, the second chapter, I mean the sixth chapter, he says, fight the good fight of faith. Yeah, you got to fight. It's a fight. Lay hold on eternal life. Mm -hmm. So there is a fight going on. Yes, it is. He That's said, crazy. Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I have mm -hmm. finished my mm -hmm. course. I have kept the faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> he, oh, he, he done this. So it can be done by a man. Yes. Give me verses uh, 1 through Eighth. In which chapter? Fourth chapter. Uh, Out Amplified. Which book? First Timothy, I mean, Second Timothy, the fourth chapter, verses one through eight. It, it brings it out a lot clearer. Or, uh, you know, people say, oh, well, he's just reading out that King James. I can't understand the words. We want to make it plain to you. We want to make it real. We don't want to give you no excuse. It reads as follows. I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is the judge, the living and the dead, and by appearing, his appearing and his kingdom. Oh, this is this is really strong. Mm -hmm. Preach the word as an official messenger. Be ready when the time is right, even when it is not. Keep your sense of urgency whether the opportunity seems favorable or unfavorable, whether the convenient or inconvenient, 
whether welcome or unwelcome. Correct those who err in doctrine or behavior. Warn those who sin. Extort, exhort and encourage those who are growing towards spiritual maturity with inexhaustible patience. I mean, you got to just mm -hmm. stay on it and faithful teaching. For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine and accurate instruction that challenges them with God's truth, but wanting to have their ears tickled mm. with something pleasing they will accumulate for themselves many teachers, one after another, chosen to satisfy their desires and to support the errors they hold. Mm -hmm. And will turn their ears away from the truth and will wander off into myths and man-made fictions and will accept the unacceptable. But as for you, be clear-headed in every situation Stay calm and cool and steady. Endure every hardship without flinching. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill the duties of your ministry. For I am ready, being poured out as a drink offering. And the time of my departure from this world is at hand, and I will soon go free. I have fought the good, and I have worshipped a noble fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith, firmly guarding the gospel against error. In the future, there is reserved for me the victor's crown of righteousness for being right with God and doing right with the, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on a, the great day, not to me only, but also to all to all those who have loved and longed for and welcomed his appearing. See, that's now, a reward right amen. there. Amen. Now, in the third chapter, the 12th verse, it says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus should suffer persecution. In the Amplified, it says, Indeed, all who delight in pursuing righteousness and are determined to live godly lives in Christ Jesus will be hunted yes, and persecuted because of their faith. Amen. We're talking about real faith here. Real faith. Real faith. That's what we're talking about, children. Authentic faith. Authentic. The real deal. Because they don't like it. Amen. Like so what you know, you know, like if you run a race. Mm -hmm. I used to when in high school I used to run the, the, the four forty and the eight eighty, which were long sprints. Mm -hmm. And my coach told me to establish your pace. Right. You will run out of energy. Because if you don't, if you start off real fast, then you'll run out of of uh, breath before the race is over, you won't be able to finish it. Mm -hmm. We see that happening today with people with faith. They start off real good, but they don't finish the race. That's because they stop having enough Because, faith. you know, as long as everything is going good, you know, you got a lot of people coming to, you know, to hear you speak and, you know, the offerings are good. And, uh, you know, it seems like everybody's working together. But the minute people start leaving, because you're not tickling their ears anymore, and a lot of them say, well, I tried that faith and it don't work. What did I say about trying? God doesn't, you don't you, try nothing. You don't try faith. Faith tries you. His word tries you. He already tested you and everything and refined you. Right. He's, he's looking at your heart. Right. He's, he's saying, okay, you say you have faith. Oh, uh, well, we're going to see. You have to hold on to it. So if you're going to finish this race here on earth, the the faith race. That you have in God. Supposed to in be God, God. In Christ. You have to endure hardship. 
And you have to, like Joseph, when he was, uh, you know, he was taken into slavery, he, he was in Potiphar's house, and I mean his Potiphar's wife accused him of, of some stuff, he was put in prison, and he was in there years. And it's, it's said when, when he was reading that, that he was refined and tested, and then he was taken out. Right. A prison. See, he but see here's it. what God does. <laughs> we had to go ahead and go through it. God has a yeah. good plan for your life. That's right. Don't give up. And you say, I'm going to believe God. I'm putting all my confidence, all my trust, all my faith in God. Yes. Not in no man. No. As a matter of fact, Jeremiah says, curse is the man that trusts us in man. Amen. You're putting your faith in God. And in his word, and what his word does, it tries you. You don't try his word to see if it's going to work. His word is trying you to see if you're going to be faithful. See if you're able to find, finish this course. Now, Paul says something in 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. Yeah, there would be a reason for all of it. 1 Corinthians. The ninth chapter. This is all through the word of God. God be trying to refine you and increase your First Corinthians, the ninth chapter, starting at the 24th verse. Here's the way, um, by the Spirit of God, Paul wrote it. He said, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that you may attain. And every man that <clears throat> strives for the mastery is tempered in all pain. Now they do it to attain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. For therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that breast the air, but I keep my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. How does that read out of Amplified? It says, do not, do you not know that in a race all runners run their very best to win? but only one receives the prize. Run your race in such a way that you may seize the prize and make it yours. Now every athlete who goes into training and competes in games is disciplined and exercises self-control in all the things. Mm. They do, do it to win a crown that withers Mm -hmm. But we do it to receive an imperishable crown that cannot wither. Therefore, I do not run without a definite goal. I do not flay, flay around like one beating the air, just shadow boxing. But like a boxer, I strictly discipline my body and I make it my slave so that after I have preached the gospel to others, I myself would not somehow be disqualified as unfit for service. You see, that's what happens to people when they say, oh, I tried that faith and mm -hmm. it didn't work. Mm -hmm. They're disqualifying they themselves. Wasn't, they was trying. And not here's the, the whole thing about it. Even in God. Uh, people, when they say, I tried that faith and that faith don't work, what they have done to multiple people, they have flipped the script, I call it, and they have said, God is in charge. Everything that happens is God's will. And I'm going to tell you another thing they do. They, they, uh, they injure their flock, and that's why they leave, because they be putting faith in the flock. And beating them to death, telling them, "Well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm embarrassed. I'm, I'm shocked that you wasn't able to do this. I told you to do this job, and you failed." And they put somebody else in, and they criticize them, and they fail them. 
They're supposed to put their confidence in God. And they're putting it in people, and then they beat the people down, making them feel bad. Yeah. Well, see, when you switch, you flip the script that, and you, you say, put your trust um, in God, and he'll tell you who to appoint for each position that you put them in, and then you pray for that person. You hold them up and you pray for them that God will right. have them to be able to do this. When you things. flip the script and you don't live by faith, you Amen. don't believe that um, in faith, and you're saying um, God is, is in charge. That's right. You're taking all the responsibility off of yourself and you're putting it on God. Right. And they have they have really uh, worked this into the different denominations. God is in control. If something happens, it's the will of God. If it don't happen, it's not the will of God. They have even added to their prayers, not my will, but thy will be done. And just as foolish as they can be, because they're not doing anything God tells them to do. <laughs> right. Not a now, thing. Now, let's look at something else here. Philippians. Bless their little heart. You know, we want you to know the truth why your faith hasn't worked. Right, why it hasn't worked. And, um, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, Brother Carter, you, you seem to know a lot. I do know a lot. Read from his study. word. From his word is not our word. I study to show myself approved unto God. And when that word getting you, it changes, it refines you like we just Right. Read. Now in Philippians, the third chapter. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, verse 12. You said Philippians, which chapter? Uh, the third chapter. Okay. Verse 12. You need to know this. It says, Not as though I had already attained, neither were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brother, I count myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, mm -hmm. and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded, and if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God should reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Read that out, Amplified. And that's all the way through 15. No, that's 16. 16. Through 16. And it reads, not that I have already attained it, this goal of being Christ-like, or having already been made perfect, but I actively press on so that I may take hold of that perfection for which Christ Jesus took hold of me and made me his own. My, my. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider that I have made it my own yet, but one thing I do, Forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the heavenly prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. All of us who are mature pursuing spiritual perfection should have this attitude. And if in any respect you have a different attitude, mm -hmm. that that too, God will make clear to you. <laughs> Man. Only let us stay true to what we have already obtained. Amen. Now go with me to Hebrews, the 12th chapter. We're getting ready to close this up for today because we do, we have a certain time period that we do faith class and then we have other things we do. Mm -hmm. But if you're listening to what I'm saying, stop saying, I'm going to try God. Yeah, don't please. I'm saying. 
Say, I believe God is who he said he is. Amen. Praise God. And that he is a rewarder mm -hmm. of those that diligently seek him. Now here's what it says in the 12th chapter of Hebrews. It says, Wherefore seeing we also are compassed, compressed about with a great cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus. <coughs> Excuse me. See, that's, that's what you got to do. You got to keep your eyes on Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, the offer and finisher of our faith, for who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Uh, give me that out of the five. Okay, where did you start it? Uh, verse 1. Uh, Hebrews 12, 1, and um, I went to verse 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, who by faith have testified to the truth of God's absolute faithfulness, stripping off every unnecessary weight, and the sin which is so easily and cleverly entangles us. Let us run with endurance and active persistence, the race that is set before us, looking away from all that will distract us and focusing our eyes on Jesus, mm -hmm. who is the author and the protector of faith the first incentive for our belief, and the one who brings our faith to maturity, who for the joy of accomplishing the goal set before him endured the cross. This regarding the shame, and set down at the right hand of the throne of God, revealing his deity, his authority, and the completion of his work, just consider and meditate on him who endured from sinners such bitter hostility against himself. Consider it all in comparison with your trials so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Amen. He wants us to be strong. He wants you to be strong. We have to endure. See, when you believe God who he is and you know that by grace through faith you have been saved he, he has given you a measure of faith Amen. and Jesus told us that measure of faith that that is as small as a, a mustard seed that's right we can remove mountains but if you're wavering back and forth and you don't believe it, say, I tried that and it didn't work. No, it tried you and you right. didn't work. You didn't work. Now, um, here's what God does in Proverbs, uh, the third chapter. Proverbs, the third chapter, children. We're getting ready to wind this up. Amen. Third chapter, verses 11 and 12. It says, Verse 11, Proverbs 3, verse 11 says, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. That's right. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, Amen. even as a father the son in whom he delights. Mm -hmm. Now, how does it read out Amplified? It said, My son, do not reject or take lightly the discipline of the Lord. Learn from your mistakes and the testing that comes from his correction through discipline. Mm. No one despises his rebuke. And then you're supposed 12. to read 12 too. For those whom the Lord loves, he corrects, even as a father corrects the son 
and whom he delights. So what the Lord is just using us to get the truth to you, I'll so you, you'll have a chance to, you. to get your mind uh, renewed. Amen. And, and if, see, here's the whole thing about faith. If you say, I tried that faith and it didn't work, mm -hmm. now you know that you, you were, you, you, God has exposed your heart that yes, you were trying it and you didn't have uh, authentic faith. But we have given you enough uh, scriptures to tell you what authentic faith mm -hmm. is. So that now, if you come back to the Lord, Amen. you can pick up where you left off. That's right. Because <laughs> the Lord is merciful. Yes, he is. Merciful. He's waiting on you to come back. Merciful and kind. He's looking at you today saying, children, all you have to do is come back to where you left off. Amen. You know, because, you know, now you got some correction, but Amen. I'm doing this because I love you. And I want you to know the truth. Now, here's the way 1 Peter puts it. 1 Peter, the fourth chapter. Ooh, thank you, Lord, for your word. And merciful. Because in this dispensation we live in right now, you know it, you know, by us uh, being a certain color, our skin being a certain color, anybody whose skin is color. not mm -hmm. white. They are oppressed. They have. They are looked down on. They have a law. Uh, they have. You know, people have. You know, have uh, done terrible things to our generations. You know, and but now God wants you to walk in faith, from faith to faith. The just shall live by faith. And here's what uh, sec, uh, 1 Peter, the fourth chapter, the 12th verse says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happening unto you. <laughs> Give me verses 12 through 19, and we're going to stop In right the fourth there. chapter. In the fourth chapter. I'll amplify. And this is First Peter. First Peter, fourth chapter. Well, because God is just using us. That's it isn't that we have already attained this well, perfection that we should be in. But what we what see one thing we have over most people, we have experience mm -hmm. with the Lord. Amen. And we know by just hanging in there, enduring. With patience, Amen. you will get the blessing. And we also know all the things people have uh, has said and done and all that against us, and even the police. Right. The Lord bought us out. He did. They tried us. Right. Now and, read. Uh, give us a verse twelve out, out of, uh, through nineteen here. Okay. And we're gonna stop right all here right. today. It for, says, for today. All right. But we got a lot more that we're going to give you. Continue to study this. <laughs> we, we're going give to give you a lot more. You know, what I do, I, I, I pray in the spirit. Amen. And due, due to, you know, we're in this pandemic and where I work at, you know, and uh, you still got to wear a mask even if you are vaccinated or whatever. It's, it's just the rules they have. And, and and uh, you know, one good thing about wearing that mask, I can be praying in the spirit all day and nobody, nobody can see my lips. Right, that's right. That's one good thing about When I'm talking with the Lord, he's talking with me. Mm -hmm. This is how I found out to stop talking about um, the old, you know, to, to, to stop saying that we're not under the Old Testament and the Old Testament don't apply to us. It but it does. People, God hasn't changed. Right. People were hateful then. And, and, hateful and that's why I had to apologize. No, you know, people. I had to humble myself before God and ask him to forgive me. I, I, you know, through ignorance. And I also apologize to my wife. See, when you learn something, you start walking in it. Amen. Give us Amen. verses 12 through 19. It reads this, Beloved, do not be surprised at the 
fiery ordeal which is taking place to test you. That is to test the quality <laughs> of your faith. Amen. I'm telling you, fire will hit you. Amen. <laughs> As though something strange or unusual were happening to you. But in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, keep on rejoicing. Amen. Be so happy. that when his glory filled with his radiance and splendor is revealed, you may rejoice with great joy. Amen. If you are insulted and reviled for bearing the name of Christ, you are blessed Ooh. and happy with life, joy, and comfort in God's salvation, regardless of your circumstances. Mm -hmm. Because the spirit of glory and of God is resting on you and indwelling in you. He whom they curse, you glorify. Amen. Make sure that none of you suffers as a murderer or a thief or any sort of criminal in response to persecution or as a troublesome meddler interfering in the affairs of others. Okay, stop right there. Busy body. This is God. what we got to learn. A lot of things are not our business. Right, it's none of your business. And just because you're being persecuted, mm -hmm. that don't mean that you're supposed to be a murderer yourself. Right. You know, going out there killing people yourself. Or rioting and and, and, stealing. and stealing people's stores and stuff, you know, or any sort of criminal. Right. Go ahead, sister. Read right. This just acting, just ignorant. <laughs> oh boy, we just but, the Lord is just, <laughs> you know. Go ahead. But if anyone suffers ill treatment as a Christian because of his belief, and he is not ashamed, but is to the glory of God because he is considered worthy to suffer in his name. For it is the time des destined for judgment to begin with the household of God. Stop right there. This is a warning, gentlemen. Yeah. My wife has been talking about it here for months. Yeah. yeah. And it finally clicked into me. You know, God is warning us. He is, he Go ahead, like read the rest of it. Just giving it to you. Read the for story. it is the time destined for judgment to begin with the household of God. And if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who do not respect or believe or obey the gospel of God? Ooh. And if it is difficult for the righteous to be saved, what would become of the godless in the sinner? Therefore, those who are ill-treated and suffer in accordance with the will of God must continue to do right and commit their souls for safekeeping to the faithful creator. This is how we made it so long, children. So don't be because worry and well You doing. don't retaliate don't be when... The enemy does something. Does he get You he don't react it. when the enemy says something. You just said it. If, if they murder, don't you go murder. If they take your money and steal from you, don't you go steal it. But you will be in. I hope that helped you. Don't you do it. We'll don't see you the, the next thing. time. God be with you because it sure helped me. You are not equipped to fight the devil by yourself. God has to do that. Vengeance is the Lord's. That's what the words say. Amen.